Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about that how can you combine data from multiple Excel files into a single Excel file. Now I've spoken about this topic in my YouTube channel in the past as well. But what is different this time is that I'm gonna talk about two peculiar challenges that a lot of people face, which I did not address it in the last time when I was making a video. Challenge number one is that when you're combining data from multiple Excel files, let me show you. Now the problem could be that in these files, the data could be stored on different sheet names. The sheet name may not be sheet one or the same sheet in all the Excel files. So how do you handle that? Not only even that, you could also have multiple sheets in one file but less sheets in the other file that is problem number one problem number two is that in any of these Excel files on any of the sheets that are there a new column could be added and how does the data automatically capture the new column that has been added into the data set that you're trying to combine I'm gonna write slight bit of M code not too much we mainly use the uh, user interface of power query but we're gonna get the job done so let's just take a look at how do we combine data from multiple Excel files so we have these files, A, B, C, D, and E. Let me just open one or two files and show you what I'm trying to combine. So let me just open file A and we have file A open. If you take a look at the bottom, we have sheet one and sheet two standard names, but we have these columns. Now, as of now, sheet one and sheet two also have the same columns. That means date, sales rep, customer, amount, profit, and the region, they get replicated again right here. Now let's just take a look at uh, the other Excel file, which is uh, Excel file B. And if you take a look at this Excel file, although the column names are the same, date, sales rep, customer, am amount, profit, and the region, but the sheet name is different. So this is this sheet, and then you may have new data. So the sheet names can be different. Also, there could be multiple sheets in one of the Excel file, which I don't have it, but there could be possibly. So we are also going to handle that. After we handle the sheet name issue, we're then going to handle the column addition issue later. So I'm in a blank Excel workbook, which is called book one. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to click on get data from file from a folder. Now it obviously is going to ask me the path of the folder, which I'm going to supply. And I'm just going to paste the path right here. Test combine, say, okay. And like you would expect, this would give me the list of all the files which are there in the particular folder. Good to go. I'm not going to click on combine. Neither am I going to click on load. I'm going to click on transform data to enter to Power Query's window. Now, once I'm there in the Power Query window, typically what most people would do is they would end up clicking on the double arrow and then they would combine the data from all the files. But this would allow you to combine the data from the sheet name, which is the same name in all the Excel files. But that's not the case that we have. So we're gonna follow a bit of manual approach, write some M code and try to combine the files. The first thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna extract all the sheets from the binary. Binary is nothing but a file. I'm gonna extract all the sheets from the binary. So I'll click on add column. I'll click on custom column and I'm gonna write a new formula. The formula that I'm gonna write is excel.workbook and uh, start the bracket and excel.workbook accepts a workbook as binary and you can see that in the content column we have binary 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 nothing means a file and i'm just going to write the content column here close the bracket and press enter now what this is going to do is this is going to go inside of this content column find a binary which is nothing but an excel file get all the sheet names and all the data that the file has although this is an excel file but in your case this could also be a csv document or a text file in that case you would not use excel.workbook rather you will use csv.document i'm going to press on ok in this case and uh, a new column gets inserted and if i just hover my mouse on top of this and just click on the empty space here i will see at the bottom that it, it starts to show me both the sheet names that i have right so let's just expand this column. So I'm just going to click here and expand this column. Uh, uncheck on the name prefix. All these columns are good. I'm just going to click on OK. And since every Excel file had two sheets, it has gotten me all the sheet names and it has also gotten me the data of every sheet. We're going to uh, also keep the name of the sheet that which sheet name is the data coming from. And we're also going to keep the name of the file that which Excel file does this belong to. All right. The other thing that you will find here in this data is that you will see that uh, the data is there although, but the headers are not promoted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another column and convert this table into a promoted header table. So let's just take a look in the add columns tab. I'm going to click on custom column. And I'm going to write a small function called table.promote headers. And it is asking me for a table. That means which table should I take and promote the headers? So I'm going to say, hey, why don't you pick up the table which is present in the data column? So we have a table here. We have a table here. Pick up all of these tables one by one. 
and promote the headers so i'm going to write data here close the bracket press ok and we now have a custom column which is where you will find the headers are promoted all right let's keep the custom column let's keep the name one column and let's keep the name column which is the name of the excel file right click remove other columns and i'm only left with the three columns that i have here now i'm going to click on expand it it shows me all the columns that i have in all the sheets since we just had the same column in all the sheets i am even if I click on load mode, there is nothing that I'm going to see. I'm going to click on OK and that's what I have. Now I can swiftly click on home and click on close and load. And let me just also change the case here, make it as a date. And I'm, I can just go back here, click on close and load. And of course, I will have all the data in front of me from all the Excel files, no matter whatever is your sheet name in that Excel file. All right, let's try two things. I'm going to go back to the folder. I am going to go to file A. In file A, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of the sheet from sheet one to data sheet. I'm also going to add a column. Let's just call this as a blank column. And I'm going to write nothing in the column. Just save it. I just want to see the column appears or not. So I click on save, close the workbook, come here, hit a refresh. Now let's just take a look that in the name one, which is nothing but the name of the sheet, data sheet starts to appear. So that's good. But you can see that no way here, I start to see the blank column that I added. To be able to get that column, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go back to the query and at the step where you expand it, you'll have to click on the gear icon and then you'll have to click on load more for that column to show up and then check mark that column, click on OK and then load back again the table and you will start to see the extra column that we added. But this is a manual process. What if um, the back in Excel files often have an additional column or they edit a column, remove a column, and you want this table that is getting loaded to dynamically handle the columns that you're adding. Let's see, how can we get that done? So I'm gonna go back to the query and I'm gonna go back to the step where I am left with the table which has promoted headers, the name of the sheet, and the name of the Excel file. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to extract all the column headers from all these tables as a list here. Why don't you take a look? So I'm going to click on add columns tab and click on custom column. Uh, it says, do you want to insert a step in between? Yep. I don't mind that. So I'm going to use a formula called table dot column names and from which table do you want to pick up the column names it is asking for a table the table is kept in the custom column this formula means that why don't you pick up the name of uh, the tables which are kept in this column the custom column and give those column names as a list why don't you see what happens when I click on OK. So you can see that it shows me a list. If I click on the list, not on the list, on the side of the list, it shows me all the columns that I have here. Now let's just take a look that do we have an additional column in uh, the data sheet that we added or not. So if I click here, I start to see the blank column, which is correct. And if I click on the list as well, I again start to see the blank column. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only keep uh, this custom column with me. So I'm gonna right click here, remove other columns. It says, do you wanna insert a step? Sure enough, I want to insert a step. Now I'm only left with the custom column and I'm gonna expand all the columns. So extract new rows, sure enough, and insert a step once again. I get all the columns from all the tables. Now, obviously, since the column names are repeated, what I wanna do for this column list is I want to remove the duplicate column. So come here and I'll say remove the duplicates. Click on insert and I'm only left with the unique columns that are possibly there in all the Excel files and the sheets that I have. This is a table as of now and I want a list. Let me show you what I'm trying to say. So if you take a look at the expand column step, it is giving you an error because we added a couple of steps which we're going to fix. But if you just take a look at this step and if you take a look at the inputs of this step, the first input here is the name of the table. Then it asks you, hey, which column should I expand? So I'm telling, hey, expand the custom column. Then there are two further lists here. Uh, if you see a curly bracket, that means a list. It tells you what are the names of the columns that you want to expand and what you should rename instead. So you can see that here is a list and here is a list. Although the second list is an optional list, the first list is a compulsory list. Now, if you see this list, this list is hard coded. That's why the additional blank column wasn't going through automatically. But if you take a look at this, this list that we have, it's not a list as of now, but we will make one. But this list that we have here, you can see the blank column got inserted automatically. Now what we'll do is we'll convert this into a list so that this list can be inserted 
right here right here let's just take a look so i'm going to come back here i'm going to right click here and i'm going to say that drill down which will convert this into a list or you can just maybe uh, come and start start to type here custom custom dot one which will also convert this into a list any of these two methods is absolutely fine i'm going to right click on the remove duplicate steps and i will say that i want to rename the step and i would like to call this step as not as remove duplicates but as a column name list all right now let's just go back to this step and let's just fix this step so um, let's just see that where do we have our table this is where we had the table and after this we expanded the custom column so you will see that we have a custom column here and these are the very tables that we would like to expand so i'm going to tell the expanded custom that hey the table name which is the first input is not column name list but it's actually remove other columns that's where the full table lies so i'm going to put a hashtag uh, inverted commas remove other columns then the next input is the column to expand the column to expand is custom and that that is what is the input right here custom and then it asks me for a list this list is still hard coded which i want to automate so i'm going to write the name of the list column name list and the last part is not necessary so i'm just going to close the bracket press enter and this will automatically get all the names of the columns in all the possible excel files and the sheets that it could possibly find and of course we change the type of the date i'm just going to click on home say close and load and we are now good to go let's just test the output before we close on the video so let's just go to some other file maybe um, c and over here i'm going to add another column let's call it uh, new column and throughout the column let's just add the value one i'm going to save it and close it and come here and start to refresh now i should see here the new column that i've added so right click here refresh here bingo we have the new column added and if you take a look at the drop down here the only value that i will see is one if i select that 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 value it will only appear in the c excel file only in sheet one i hope that solves a lot of the questions that a lot of people were asking me a big shout out to christian who requested me to make a video on this and thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks once again. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.